There are just some topics that we Lutherans don't like to talk about very much. Pentecost, Pentecostal, the Holy Spirit gets a little murky. Repentance, what's that? Hell, who wants to talk about hell? The main theme, I think, in this text is one of those topics that we don't want to talk about very much. Evil. Maybe if we ignore it, it would go away. The word evil is used three times in eight verses. What's particularly important is the location of this story. Where does it happen? And they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching, and he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an evil spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? You have come to destroy us. I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the evil spirit convulsed him, and crying with a loud voice came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, What is this? A new teaching? With authority he commands even the evil spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout Galilee. The gospel ends here. Please be seated. Please join me in a word of prayer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The story of Jesus being tempted by the devil in the wilderness is recorded three times in the Gospels. Matthew tells us everything we want to know about each of the temptations, and then when the devil does not succeed, Matthew says that the devil left Jesus. Luke says the same thing. Mark is different altogether. In the Gospel of Mark, there's no accounts of how Jesus was tempted by the devil, although he was. It, just, it is just announced, but there is other details. And in Mark, the devil never leaves. Now, what is that? Is that just an oversight, or is that something else again? Fred Craddock at Candler believed that it was something else again. Craddock believes that the devil never leaves in Mark because Mark is a battle narrative between the forces of evil and the forces of good, and Craddock uses the text that we just heard read as prime example of that battle. It's the first thing that Jesus does in his entire ministry in Mark's gospel, and it sets the paradigm for who he is. What is it? It's an exorcism. Some evil spirit has got a hold of some man and Jesus comes and casts it out of him. Notice where it was. It happened where? In the synagogue. In the church. Now it's one thing to battle the forces of evil outside the church. We expect that. That couple that lost their lives tragically were murdered looking for a Mustang that never existed were buried yesterday. I heard this morning that ISIS just beheaded another innocent civilian. There are people not too far from this church who are starving to death and other people who have more food that you can shake a stick at. Evil is all around us. But inside these walls? If the devil sneaks in the back door or gets disguised as a member of this congregation and comes in the front door, then you have something else altogether. What do you do? What do you do when even inside the house of God there are forces that oppose the building of the kingdom of God? What do you do? What is evil in the church? 
disagreeing with the pastor? I don't think so. All pastors make mistakes and they ought to be disagreed with. Disagreeing with each other, coming in conflict with one another, that's not evil. Sometimes conflict creates some of the most wonderful creative solutions you could possibly come up with. So what is evil in the church? What's it look like? Well, ladies and gentlemen, for one thing, it is my experience that evil in the church starts to grow when we think that this is our church. This isn't your church. This isn't my church. It's God's church. It's the body of Christ in the world, and you and I are only caretakers of it. You and I are called to run this place and make decisions and treat people the way God would run this church and make decisions and treat people. And when we think it's our church, my church, your church, we usurp God's prerogative and we break the first commandment. It's idolatry. It's putting our needs and our wants ahead of God. And that is evil. What is evil in the church? It's when we think that our prime purpose for being is to do ministry in here, when in fact our real area of ministry is training each other to go out and do ministry out there. Too many churches, too many churches live in a room full of mirrors. All they care about are themselves. As if the kingdom of God rises and falls on what color to paint the doorknobs. Three quick stories, each of them true. I know a church that had a a council meeting once where they spent 10 minutes rejecting the idea of doing a soup kitchen and two and a half hours fighting over what color to paint the fellowship hall. I know a church once that decided that they didn't have enough money to help with a food-raising pantry in their local community, all the while their cemetery fund was reaching figures in excess of $1 million. I know a church that built a 15-foot privacy fence on their back lot so they didn't have to pay attention to a housing unit for low-income housing right behind them. That's evil. What is evil in the church? So involved with not doing anything that the devil leaves you alone. You've heard me say this 150,000 times before in the last nine years. Harry Wentz said that the devil doesn't have to make you evil, just has to make you useless. If we don't do anything to build the kingdom of God out there, if we don't train disciples to share the gospel, if we don't create new ministries to transform lives, the devil will not tempt us because to be quite frank frank with you, we won't be worth tempting. Do you want to know something? You You want to know what to do if you want the devil to leave you alone? Do nothing. Be a half-hearted Christian. Come to church every now and then. Say prayers at bedtime. Throw a few bucks in the in the in the till. Nothing more than that. And then come and and try and uh, collect your religious decoder ring. Because to be quite frank with you, ladies and gentlemen, one of the most insidious forms of evil is thinking Christianity is a part-time, half-hearted spectator sport. Evil in the church. It's been there since Jesus was alive. It's in God's church today. So I leave you with just one simple thought. Think about this. Evil is live spelled backwards. Think about it.